got it. Okay. So let me just mute that and <clears throat> echo. <clears throat> Okay, so I'll call the meeting to order here at 7 o'clock or 7.07, and we'll start with our Pledge of Allegiance. Stand if you are able and look at a flag. Okay. I pledge allegiance pledge to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Okay. Hey, okay, folks. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes from our April 6th meeting. Um, I'll make a motion. Sherry, seconded by <laughs> uh, Jim. Any questions on that? All in favor? Aye. Terrific. Um, <laughs> Sorry. One natural resource manager report. Teresa, General Report Garden Committee and Litter Committee. Oh, well, it was a big month for the Litter Committee. We had clean sweep, uh, ran out of patches. Whoa. Uh, Right. So, uh, did and you save question. me one? What? Are they gone? Gone? Did you save me one? They're gone. They're, no. Oh. Sorry. Oh uh, they all went. God. They all went to the kids. Well, okay. I ordered. I only ordered two hundred this year because the last couple of years I ordered three hundred fifty, and then everything was canceled, and I ended up with like over three hundred extra patches. Your goals oh, are, I'm bummed. I should not have went cheap. down no. to the hall. So this year, and it, you know, I'm ordering them like in January. And right. we were having an Omicron surge and all that. And so, I, you know. No, no, no. That's all right. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I said, you know, while supplies last. And there were some, you know, adult groups that wanted them. And I said, well, I'll let you have some. But I'm going to put them on hold. And then if some kids come in, is it, you know, they, they oh. got priority. They're scouts yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a much better, much better turnout. Clean sweep. Nice to see that back up and running. Um, uh, adopt a street. Uh, oh, and we had the, the high school kids it was insane this year. Apparently all the, the high school kids didn't realize that the community service actually was going to be required for this year, the, the 10 hours until sometime in April. Yeah. And, yeah so we had 1300 high school students that suddenly oh. all wanted 10 hours of communities that's 13 Whoa. hour 13,000 hours of community you should have paved the roads and, wow. you know we were nobody was set up for it and and you know compounding that things like you know the who's the town of river cleanup they usually have all these boats that take people up and down the river and drop them off along the shoreline and then come and pick they weren't running the boats this year oh. um the litter committee we didn't have a, a big event planned because we didn't know what was going to happen with the pandemic so they're just we didn't have the events for for kids to come to um and they were all pretty desperate i you know i had a lot of parents calling me i i had days where i could barely get any work done because i had so many calls and emails wow yeah, it was crazy. Just crazy. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, adopt a street. We have uh, Wells Hollow Creamery, Creamery adopted Beard Sawmill on Commerce Drive. So that's great. We had a nipper surcharge um, that actually went into effect last year. And uh, so For people who aren't aware of this, there's a state law that there's a surcharge on nip bottles and uh whatever municipality within which those nip bottles were sold, the money received goes to that municipality. Right. And we weren't really too aware of that before we, uh, Shelton did get a check last uh, week for over $16,000. That's awesome. Awesome. And it has, it has to be used for litter cleanup. And so, right. or yeah. Check. Yeah. I just couldn't believe how many that were sold. 300,000 nippers just in Shelton in six months. 300. It was 332. 330,000. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the wrong Both business. Of them end right? up on Waverly Road anyway. Oh, yeah. Man. So that, that's a whole other a separate account was set up for that. And how are we going to use the money and all that? Um, now, for our litter committee, started something that I thought was really effective. We were working on a top 10 list of the you know, most problematic areas in Shelton. And we have a list of about 15 sites so far that are nominated and we haven't finalized it, but um, I think that's gonna allow us to really go beyond clean sweep, clean sweep and adopt a street 
and start looking at some of these areas and maybe maybe pick three and say what can you know come up with an action plan um, for those three areas. For example, Bridgeport Avenue from uh, Commerce Drive to Constitution, that whole stretch. I think you know in front of Walmart and the Park and Ride and um, Indian Well Road, uh, Mill Street. So we we could start to look, and a lot of them are state properties. Right. Why would you pick a state highway when they actually do clean up those somewhat? Well, some of them they do, mm. but it's not very often. Like Indian Well Road, you know, during the summer is just trashed and it, it's very rarely picked up um, during the summer because of all the people coming into the state park. Um, so, so that's good. Uh, for the gardens, again, this time of year is really a lot going on. Eklund Garden, I did get a couple of high school kids to repair about half of the deer fence was in horrible shape. So I got a couple of them um, and we, we got a lot done there. You know, did a garden clean and had a little work party, fertilized it, transplanted some bee balm. So that's in better shape. Birch Bank, which I'm, I kind of in my mind think, think of as almost a garden because of the, the type of plants that are in there. I've been pulling garlic mustard. I had a small work party there for pulling garlic mustard as well. Planted some bee balm and a plant called uh, golden ragwort, which are two plants that I think might do well in a particular spot and outcompete the invasive that, you know, just it's whack-a-mole with the invasive plants. So I also put in some uh, deer repellent. So I'm trying to get some competition for those invasives. And of course, the community garden plots, you know, got new gardeners coming in and had to replace some, of, you know, uh, uh, water bottles and hoses and stuff like that. Uh, for trails, I think Bill will talk about that um, with the Eversource plans. Um, I did scout a couple potential trail reroutes to get them away from the existing tower pads. Uh, areas that are going to be completely rebuilt. Um, they're just potential relocations, not, not finalized or anything. Um, and I think that's it for me. I mean, I, I think uh, what, uh, the, the, the high school kids really kept me busy this year. Reese, I know uh, John Cook shared some um, recent infringements. Do you have anything with that at the moment, or it's kind of early for that? Um, yeah, I think it's kind of early for that. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Teresa. I know it's a busy time with everything all coming together at once. Um, Bill Dyer, Trails Committee. Um, yeah, we had two um, recent work parties and we had more high school kids come than we've ever had, maybe in the total. <laughs> it was amazing. It's hard to keep them motivated. Some kids are work really hard and others uh, which end of a hoe do I use you know, it's yeah. kind of discouraging but <laughs> got a lot done at French's Hill and at the uh, Lane Street uh, area of the wreck path and we planted some trees and uh, who knows it's how they'll do it but anyway um, as you're we planted three uh, Kusa dogwoods in the area going up towards uh, um, you know, when you leave the meadow and head up into the woods. To the Huntington Woods, yeah. So, um, uh, the barn is coming along well and uh, but continuing very slowly because we're dependent, of course, on uh, city work. But anyway, they finished the um, painting inside and out, and it looks fantastic. We're really pleased with the... Uh, way the stairs and floor upstairs came out and the polyurethane two coats of the whole building inside. So we're done with them. We met with Chris to talk about lighting. Um, he said, you guys, he said, my budget's strained. If you'll buy the lights, we'll put them up. So that's the plan. And um, we agreed they've got some, you know, cast iron, no, probably a little <clears throat> conduit or anyway that's already in the barn. So, and they hired a new electrician because the guy that we were working with just sort of disappeared. Well, my name is Ted, but 
<laughs> hasn't even picked up his last paycheck. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's moving along well. We're working with um, Allison on the um, area to the left of the barn in terms, we planted uh, three trees, three ornamental trees and uh, some ferns and various things there. And the city's helped us out with moving rocks around and that sort of thing. So that's coming along well. For, for uh, Tom's benefit, Al Allison is uh, Allison Menendez. Uh, she was a former member of the Conservation Commission. Okay, um, I know, I, a... I know, I, I, I know Allison, but I okay. didn't know, yeah. but yeah, I didn't know that was the Allison you were talking about. But yeah, yeah. Frank Menendez, you know him for sure. Yeah, yeah, I know Fra Allison. I, I know Frank yeah, and Allison. Sure. Yeah. Of course. So um, she walks anyway. her la her, uh, her golden retrievers, I think, every day in the back nine at Bronson. Anyway, oh, is that right? That yeah. big dog. Um. Bill, is, is there is there anything I, I know? Had we talked about a date for like the barn ribbon cutting uh, anniversary with the rec path and stuff? There was the mention of uh, that in our last yeah, meeting. And is there anything with that date that would help uh, accelerate the city's resources to get the electrical in place? And since we're in May, and if we we're going to use any funds for some of the fixtures, if they would be selected promptly so that we could utilize this year's budget for that. Well, we're, we're actually selecting the fixtures and yes, we're going to move out quickly. Valley lighting has a, uh, you know, an account for us so that we don't have to worry about the sales tax issues and that sort of thing. So that's, we're going to do that immediately, basically select the um, fixtures. We're looking at a date around June 15th. We, we don't really think it's appropriate to do it on a weekend because the parking there is just so limited. So I even mentioned to the mayor, uh, you know, how about if we do it on a, you know, Wednesday or Thursday? He said, not, definitely not Tuesday because he's in the Bronson Tuesday night league. And uh, he said, yeah, just let me know and I'll try to be there. And uh, so we're looking at a date like June 15th. Okay. Um, Regarding regarding the fixtures, I think we should be able to set an example for others and you know be dark sky compliant and um, you know efficient or whatever. Strictly <laughs> just indoor, Dang. except for you know there'll be one outside on the door, but the rest of them are all indoors. Oh, okay. During, okay. during the trail, the reason I'm laughing is during the trails committee meeting, they spent a lot of time talking about various light fixtures. Okay. <laughs> Mainly fluorescent, which is <laughs> forget it. I'm, I'm I, I will tell LED you, the only way yeah. they'll all be LED. There, no question about LED. that. Every time I change a fixture around here, I'm changing them all to LED. There you yeah, go. Of course, yeah. They hey, turn and they, then, yeah. Bill, Bill, right around then, if it's if you do it midweek, just avoid that uh flag day because the mayor does the big flag day right around i think it might be the 11th or 12th but i'm 14th, not sure. 14th 14th, the 14th is flag day. there you go so that's um, tuesday don't do it that, that'll 14th. compete with with what we do okay and if you know it's on the 15th like once it's really settled send me a text because this way i can hopefully get that time off from work all right yeah no we want to give Every you know the alderman and you know everybody at least two weeks notice if not three so um we're doing a national trails why, day wait a minute bill why can't you decide on a date right now well we kind of like to be sure that the lights are in you know even well you can that that's that that won't be an issue <laughs> we'll get the lights in for that don't worry about that set the date set the date Medium. Well, all right. People always work better with a deadline. Thir what, what is the 15th? Is that a Thursday? It's That's a Wednesday. Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Uh, how, about, how about the 16th? Yeah. The what 16th? time? Make what it time? a Thursday. Six o'clock? Six oh, o'clock on, oh, okay. on Thursday the 16th. Okay. Right. That's it. We'll get the lights in for you. You get the light. You tell you tell whoever you get the light. You just decide what the lights are. We'll get the lights. All right. All right. Well, no, it's we'll we'll physically pick up the lights. It's the right, wire good. tubes and the, you know the switches and the outlets and that sort of thing. Okay. Hey, project. 
We'll get, that, they, we'll get it installed for you by then. Did okay. you say the, the time on that June 16th uh, to Thursday date, 6, 6 p.m.? Okay. Yeah. Okay, let the aldermen know right now or this week. That All right. 6 o'clock, we want them there for the barn opening and the mayor. Great. Okay, good. Great. Um, Teresa indicated you had some information about the Eversource uh, Towers. Right. We're actually going to have a field walk. Anybody who wants to join us on um, this coming Thursday uh, at um, anyway, today's Wednesday. So a week from Thursday <laughs> at uh, nine o'clock, we're going to meet with the Eversource people at uh, uh, Constitution North and basically look at every site that they're going to do all the way to Buddington. So should there be anybody from the city engineer's office at that meeting or any others besides trails? Grace, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I could touch base with Remus. I mean, it's really an issue more of how it impacts the hiking trails. Yeah, no reason not to. I, I suppose we could let John Cook know too, but I, <laughs> I'd be very surprised if he'd be interested in participating but yeah definitely let them know though yeah i mean, yeah. I think the offer is um important just keep them informed i mean i know when this came to the mayor's office the mayor um um communicated with Teresa to kind of take it on but um we should let other agency departments in. so yeah that's that's good um as i said national trails day june the 4th we've got a hike um, in the book and scheduled for uh, 9 30 at um, Indian Well State uh, Park across from the where we go up the hill and around um, Tamor and then back down again. Uh, and we got we decided to have uh, work parties this month on the 14th and the 21st. Is the twenty eighth is a is Memorial Day weekend, so we, we still we sort of gave some kid high school kids. We signed off as long as they promised to come to one of the next two, and we'll see how that works out. It was very strange that they didn't really know that they had to do it until April, and May first was the deadline date. So, and well, yeah, like, so we did like have a lot of help, and then they. You know, some of them worked really hard and did a great job. Apparently, there was some little blurb in some packet that got in the fall. Uh, but, you know, then it was, as far as I could tell, it was never, you know, repeated to the kids or, you know, it, they just forgot about it. And I think a lot of them just assumed that the requirement would be waived at the last minute, like it was the last two years. Interesting. All right. Yeah, it makes sense. I think the process, well, it's a great idea or concept. I know a lot of other boards of ed have this concept. I think it could be improved so that the, uh, I saw a lot of Facebook posts saying, hey, my kid needs to do these hours. Yeah. Does anybody yeah. know where I can do it? Where can I do it? And it's I, like, we have this already need... approved and vetted list that the, the board of education has. If they could just simply have some sort of posting on their website with a link right to the Shelton Trails or to the History Center or whoever, that uh, it would just make the process a lot easier than Teresa handling hundreds and, of emails. And then, and but calls. even more so, because then when you need somebody, like if I needed somebody, you know, next Wednesday or the following Saturday for, you know, if I needed a couple of kids to do a task, I suddenly wouldn't be able to find anybody. Yeah. And yet in April, it's just call after call after call after call. I need something this weekend. Yeah. And that's the other thing. It asked me on a weekend. Yeah. I think uh, maybe a little communication with whoever administrates that at the Board of Ed, we could help improve the process for the entire community. So we're I'm probably surprised. not the only one who's had this impact of all everything all at once. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm surprised I didn't extend it a month. You know, that that would have been fine. What difference is why does May 1st have to be? Well, yeah, anyway, I, I mentioned that same idea to Teresa. So uh, anything else, Bill? I think that's it. All right. Ed McCreary, moving on to a canal lock. 
Any um, movement on that process with SCDC? Uh, as <clears throat> fast as molasses. Uh, so um, one, one of the two remaining engineer candidates uh, had submitted a slightly more detailed report um, than the other and the mayor suggested go back and get those same details from the other one. Uh, which I saw in my inbox tonight, uh, just arriving as I was uh, getting ready to come home. So it's uh, still a work in progress. Very good. Okay. Anybody have if any questions for Ed regarding that? No. Uh, moving on to uh, some outstanding PNZ items. Uh, there's nothing that I saw on their upcoming agendas of, of new applications for development that we have to comment on. Um, however, um, Alex did share with Teresa and I a, a list of uh, items that are out into the future. And I will say the planning and zoning is going to have a lot on their plate in the very near future. Uh, there's yeah. going to be a, a lot coming their way. Yes. So that's mm -hmm. all I'll say about that. Um, but uh, one of the things that uh, uh, was up last, uh, they had their uh, special meeting. Why don't you share that list with the rest of the commissioners? Um, Alex's uh, email asked that it, it not be shared outward because some of them are very um, uh, tech session type uh, items right now. But um, uh, there's there's a lot of um, development going to be happening along the, the Mouse property, Constitution Boulevard, Bridgeport Avenue, there's one I think has already been applied now. So. Well, I hate to say this, but unfortunately, if you know about it, the rest of the commissioners should know about it. Okay. Or Teresa. There is no, there's no, this is a totally transparent public meeting. And sure. I'm okay. a little, I'm a little concerned about that. So okay. if, if you can't release it, there's a problem. And I do not want Alex releasing information to you or Teresa if it's not supposed to be released. And that's that's not proper. Valid, it's, valid totally point. transparent in this city. We have to be. Mm -hmm. And it concerns me greatly that information should not be shared. Now, you can share it if you uh, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. I do. We can't start that. We can't start that stuff. Right. So yeah. I know no. something I'm going to tell you guys. If, uh, you know, even if I... I if I can't say it to something, I'm going to tell somebody I can't say it. Right. But but the bottom line is we have to be transparent. We have to be the example to the city of how it should be how it should happen. I understand. I'm tell you right now, we have to set the example, okay. and that is one. There's a one example right here, right now that bothers me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 troublemaker extraordinaire. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's a valid point. I, I, I just to be clear, none of these are applications. They're just people who have interest in properties and what they're talking about. So, but I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do there. Okay. Message received. Um, at the last meeting, uh, we were reviewing the change to zoning schedule for what is the definition of a, a farm structure as an application from Stone Gardens um, to change the zoning regs. And uh, Jim brought up that one of his concerns was parking uh, in terms of uh, offsite parking for some farm operations for their staff in particular. Hey, Bill, you made it. You're All right. Cool now. Um, uh, so I, I went to the uh, the planning and zoning meeting and, and brought those concerns to, to them during the public portion. Um, and I used as a reference some other farms that are in town and how these regulations might apply to them, such as Laurel Glen or um, uh, Beersley's uh, Organic Farm. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen now with Guy Beersley having passed away there, but it's an active farm and so on. Um, and uh, what was interesting is during uh, in, in the response to that, the applicant's attorney, Steve Bellis, uh, I referenced the, the Bear Plain Farms over on Old Mill Road, having now been purchased by the city. Uh, he referenced that it has not been purchased by the city. So um, I just put that on our agenda to let you know that the uh, purchase of the 25 acre property on Old uh, Mill Road there, the Bear Plain <laughs> Farm, um, that transaction um, actually did not go through. 
So I'm not sure why, um, but um, the city um, does not um, have ownership of that property. Um, then on uh, uh, the they got a high offer. Well, I, I'll be. I'll be transparent about it. When the board of aldermen approved the mayor to negotiate, and then the next day the mayor said how much the city was going to pay for it, and I thought that's really the kind of stuff that should be an executive session. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that had any impact or not, but then the following month he went to the board of aldermen and asked for approval, and they did approved it. And usually, if you get a board of aldermen approval, you already have some sort of an option agreement, right? So. Uh, and then it's just, I mean, I, I, Who knows? how can you read into anything? I mean, uh, attorney Bellis is an attorney who's also a developer and for him to know that the city didn't execute it. I, I don't know what the parties are and I shouldn't speculate. It's yeah. just, uh, it's unfortunate because, um, you know, I think it's an important parcel, although, um, you know, we discussed it in depth as to whether, what its true value would be in protecting resources and greenway corridors Thank and so you. on. So. Well, there's nothing wrong with asking the mayor why it wasn't purchased. Um, I agree. I mean, I found out by Steve Bellis commenting back to my comment. Let's ask the mayor. Let's ask him, let's so. send a letter to the mayor and ask him. Okay. Sure. Or we'll find yeah. out in short order. Yeah. Um, and then uh, regarding purchase of open space, what did go through was one that Ed McCurry had been working on with um, um, Edward for quite a while there on Mohegan Road. So um, that's a thumbs up in that direction. So a, uh, a former chairman of this commission told me sometimes you have a lot of balls in the air and one drops and you didn't expect it. Another one you catch. So you just got to keep a lot of balls in the air. And I'll report that the um, <coughs> garage has been uh, removed. Yeah. Yep. Left a ladder. The, there was a ladder there for a while. That's that's gone. And the developer dropped off two loads of topsoil, leveled it off. Um, so kudos. Really, uh, really pleased with that. There's a lot of vines that need to in, and multiflora rosa that need to be uh, addressed on the parcel, but uh, all in due course. Very good. It looks good. Uh, it looks nice, Ed. Um. So then moving on, uh, budget process is ongoing right now in City Hall. They did have Board of A&T meetings, similar to what they used to do. Uh, I attended that. Uh, obviously, there's no issues with our budget. It's a pretty simple one every year. Um, so the, the request uh, had no questions within our budget process. Um, and then I don't have any other uh, updates regarding the Open Space Trust account, but um, the last item on our agenda we really didn't get into too much at our last meeting, but um, there was an article in the Shelton Herald that talked about um, open space abounds in Shelton. And, um, and Jim brought up the, the concept that we should refocus upon that our uh, open space acquisition targets or greenway corridors are around our water resources. And so um, I think that we should, you know, just maybe keep that in mind as we, uh, maybe get back to looking at our quality of life list. Um, and for Tom's benefit, we had a list of properties that um, own property owners that had some parcels that we thought would be um, best benefiting the city if they were protected in their natural state or conserved. And so we called that a quality of life list. We and, sent letters. Uh, we sent we, letters to those people and and uh, we usually dealt with the properties individually in an executive session so that it wasn't a public, right. really wasn't. It was more of a internal kind of, you know, let's see what we can do to protect these open spaces. Yeah, what we discovered years ago was that uh, uh, entities like Toll Brothers, as an example, would send out a letter to any property owner who owned more than, let's say it was 15 acres in a municipality, say, hey, would you be interested in really making a, development that would really help your ancestors and so on and so forth yeah. really kind of they sold it as a as, as a benefit to you and you know, they they said, well, if these developers are out there doing that you know maybe we should be you know in opposition right. to that and reaching out to these homeowners who have or property owners who have uh, legacy yeah yeah and oh, like, how about legacy, that list? You know. is it is it is it dead now is it no are there still properties available yeah that, yeah, yeah. Can, can that I, list can I, can I get a copy of that at some sure. point? 
Yeah, thanks. Sure. Was Go that ahead. original list done by the Open Space Committee? Uh, that was a, well, not really. It was a quasi committee with Harriet being sort of the chairman of the Open Space Committee at the time, but of course she was vice chairman of the Conservation Commission. And nobody really, Ed, Ed Conklin, Conklin was on it. And then he went to ZBA. So it kind of fell apart, the Open Space Committee, and then conservation took over it. Uh, yeah, to, to, to Jim's point, yeah, Ed Conklin um, started the Open Space Committee uh, right. as a chairman, and um, it had components from Parks and Rec, uh, Alderman, I think Anglis was on it. Uh, I was on it at one point. Um, right. and, um, it, it devolved or dissolved <laughs> to the, and then it ended up in the conservation commission's hand to kind of, right, right. But, but it was there for a while, or is yeah. that where the, the, um, quality of life list originated? Was probably, probably. Well, I think the concept originated with, uh, uh, Harriet and Terry as, uh, uh, co-chairs back in the day. And then it was realized that this concept really needs more involvement of other, entities like parks and rec and it really, so, it really started as a funding as a funding mechanism to uh support uh grant uh things it was it was actually before the uh plan of conservation development it was sort of our plan of conservation development so we could say hey we just did not automatically come up we didn't just for the moment come up with this this was our long-term plan of acquisition so it, it supported our grant application. Yeah. And, and, and let me add that uh, I think Bill too, we've been members long enough. I remember when we as a commission worked on the list, not only yeah. deciding to add yeah. properties, but to remove yeah. properties and to what, what you know, we take a property or two a month and send out a letter or decide whether to send a letter to this property owner, um, you know, but it's gone by the wayside in recent years. Yeah, I think we should uh, reinvigorate it. And uh, right. um, some of the properties have been preserved. Uh, um, some of the properties have been developed. It's a mix. But uh, we did kind of like my corner of town, you know, maybe knowing certain property owners that might be neighbors to me or Sherry near her. Uh, we kind of looked at um, trying to develop a relationship or a rapport with who the property owner was just to make them aware of some of the tool we had in our tool chest that uh, would allow them um, to preserve their properties. Because one of the big issues was um, transition between generations with estate management. You know, if you have a big piece of property and, um, you know, it's really not costing you a lot in property taxes every year because of Act 490. Uh, and then all of a sudden somebody passes away and it gets passed on to the next generation and gets valued at a very large number. Um, but you are cash poor to pay the tax on that. You say, well, let's just sell it now. So right. It was, there's a lot of pressures that can uh, uh, impact which direction a property, raw property land is going. And that's why yeah. we, we developed the list. Well, that's why I, I would, it'd be great, you know, if I, if, you know, when I get a hold of the list, because it's all about connecting the dots, right? You never right. know who knows who right. with exactly. these kind of committees. So, exactly. I'd love yeah. to see that. I wonder if the Watson property what was on that list over right before you, you get into uh, Trumbull on Nichols Ave. You know, that's, AJ one that's Grasso. been developed yeah yeah uh, that's in my backyard it's sort of my backyard it doesn't right. matter i'm just i'm just curious and if it yeah, was i'm not sure if i i, I know there was i'm people not sure park i think originally it might have been but, part yeah. of people park yeah okay so yeah we can well we'll we'll uh tidy that up i know that document sits somewhere in one of my email attachments so uh thanks Tom. Um, and then, um, really that's, that's all I had on, on the agenda list. So, um, we're to, unless I missed anything, Teresa, have I, have I gotten everything? Yeah. Um, uh, comments by members then, uh, I'll start off. Um, uh, Jim and I were talking before the meeting formally started and, uh, I got to enjoy one more day of skiing in Vermont on Sunday. So. Wow. <laughs> They had six trails and three lifts uh, going at Killington, and I said, "You're well, a stick puppy, that, Charlie." Brown. Got to, got to, got to sneak out and, and and try that. And so I did that. I got slushy in the afternoon. Obviously, it's pretty warm, but uh, that meant I was able to play eighteen holes too. So good. Vermont and May to be able to ski half a day and play eighteen holes of golf is a pretty wow. great day. That's a good. That's a good day. Yeah. 
So I'll I'll go clockwise. Teresa, what do you have for comments? Oh, I I made a, a solar powered bog filter for my goldfish pond. Uh, I was actually inspired by um, last last fall. I had met with Nancy Steiner because she's got an infestation of myelin in mine. And as I was at her house, um, we went past this goldfish pond, which had really crystal clear water and I couldn't see any filter. So I asked her about it and she says, oh, it's got this bog filter. So what it is, is a, there's like this separate pond that doesn't have any, you don't see the water in it because it's got gravel and it's got plants in it and it's got a it's got a, um, a PVC uh, infiltration pipe network underneath the gravel, and the, the the water from the pond is pumped up into this higher secondary pond that's filled with gravel and plants, and the water is forced through the gravel, almost like a septic system, and, and then it comes back down to the pond. So I just finished up making one of those, and I stocked it with, um, I went up to Earth Tones, and um, I got marsh marigolds and blue flag iris. And I have some pickerel weed in there. So I'm crossing my fingers. And the whole thing's powered. It's solar powered. I, it was solar powered before. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, when, when the sun comes out, the, the water starts going through. And there's a little waterfall coming out of the, the bog filter. It's not really a bog. I don't know why they call it bog filter. But see what happens. The Germans have swimming cool. pools that are natural like that, have natural filters like that. So... Mm -hmm. We may be getting that, getting to that someday. So interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, Jim, since you spoke up, comments by you. Um, I think I made my comment tonight. <laughs> uh, Ed McCreary, what do you have to offer? Other than uh, you know, saying how pleased I am the Mohican Road project went through. Uh, today's uh, missive is a little bit about the wonders of the internet. So at about four o'clock, my wife sent me a link that her cousin had sent her uh, that she stumbled upon uh, describing how her uncle had been killed returning from um, uh, a bombing mission over Germany in World War II. And they had literally were coming into the uh, land in England uh, when they crashed and, and he was in his plane and everyone was killed. And so it gave the name of the plane. And so I figured, well, let's see what's going on, on the internet. Within 15 minutes, I had a picture of the plane with the crew standing in front of it, wow. um, a diary of and, and the other plane it crashed into, a picture of that plane, that bomber and its crew, uh, a diary of the guy who kept a daily diary mission of every bombing raid over Germany. And he was in the plane behind the two that crashed in together when they both tried to land at the same time in the runaway and described what happened and that he knew the pilots and, and the diary had all the details of their bombing mission before this happened. And I'm like, oh my God, all this information on the internet sometimes can be just mind boggling. And you get uh, it in minutes. What could, have taken, minutes. what could have taken months to research, right. you get it in yeah. minutes. Yeah, right. crazy. I I'll say the most unique thing I found on the internet in that kind of a, a curious, never thought I would find that was my great, great grandfather's will. Ah. Hmm. In oh. Ireland, after a certain number of years, the wills are made public and um, the records, uh, you know, you can look them up and uh, looked up the name and said, wow, there you go. <laughs> so interesting. Oh. Uh, Sherry. Well, I'm um, struggling with a cold as everybody, sorry, I was, using a tissue a lot. Um, but Arlene Wells passed away, Roy Wells' wife. She yeah. was a member of our church and a good friend of my dad's growing up as a kid. I heard a lot of stories about her. And um, yeah, this, that older generation, just missing them a little bit when they go. All the personalities that they had, you remember them as a kid. And then I came home from Kentucky, um, had a very nice, beautiful visit. It's, it's a different world down there. It's very um, nice. It was positive. Everybody's, they, it's almost like they talk different than we do. They don't, I don't know them well enough, thick Southern people, but they're very, they'll talk about recipes. They'll talk, nobody talked about COVID. It's almost like it's not that they ignored it. You just don't like here. Everything is definitely about the news. And down there, they kind of talk about them, their life. Or it was pretty refreshing. Bluegrass. 
Oh yeah. There's a lot of uh, culture down there. Um, we were in, well, it was called Elizabeth town. Nobody there. They all call it E town. And, um, Oh, everything. Well, Kentucky Derby was coming this week. So you saw it in the airport. You saw it everywhere. People getting ready for the Derby and uh, a lot of bourbon. My daughter works at a restaurant that has a Kentucky bourbon and you can't even, Dimitri said you can't even buy it in the state. Like it's so popular. They ship it out. Like we could get it in Connecticut, but they can't get it there. Yeah. And one bottle was like $1,500. It was like the bourbon's crazy down there. They're really into their bourbons. I'm sure it was a, a brand that if I said it, you'd all remember it or know it, but I didn't. Mm. And that's it. Looks good to see everybody. Yes. Still there. Oh, uh, yeah. Great to see everybody and uh, looking forward to summer. So, when you were in Georgia, you were in Georgia, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you there watching Tiger Woods play? No, we weren't in Augusta. That's, uh, oh. hello, my nephew lives in Augusta. So if I ever could get a ticket, I'd at least. <laughs> we thought, Andy and I, I don't know why we thought you were there. So I teased him one day because it was on for like days. I'm like, really? <laughs> this isn't over yet. And I right. went, oh my God, there's Bill Dyer. And my husband was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no. Can't say I was there. We were in St. Simon Island, not in uh, mm. not in Augusta, which is actually a couple hours away. I think. Yeah, the weather looked beautiful. Indeed. Uh, Tom Wilson. Uh, well, Tom, I got to say congratulations to uh, Jones's Tree Farm for your recognition at the uh, ch uh, chamber event the other day. That was very nice. Um, the Silver Hammer Award. The Silver Hammer. Yeah. Awesome. And then. Uh, well, speaking of people pass it, yeah. So I, uh, we lost my mother-in-law last week. So that was yeah, so last week was great. Right. But she was yeah. a great, a, a great lady, Bridgeport, born and raised, and uh, lived in Shelton for a while. So uh, Chicky Falanga, she was Billy Finch, the mayor of Bridgeport, it was, it was her nephew. So but anyway, good wow, lady. I'm sorry. Condolences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right, folks. Well, um, uh, I know that eventually we'll be able to have a meeting together in person. Um, right the, now, the, uh, the city hall is still not allowed to be open into the evening hours. So you could, you could have meetings uh, starting as late as 6.30. Okay. Well, we can meet in the barn when we get lights. Yep. That's a possibility That's too. True. Yeah, it would be good to see everybody's uh, in person. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, but uh, un until then, the Zoom Zoom works pretty well. We didn't have to do any screen shares and stuff tonight, but uh, um, it it'd be nice to get back to in person stuff. So, yeah. All right. Well, with that uh, said, uh, sayonara, everybody. All right. Good night. Good night. Take care. Stay yeah, well. Tom, I'll look for, look for that letter and I'll take a look at it. That list. Bye, Bill. Bill. Bye, care, everybody. Bill, we'll be in touch. You and I, I'll be in touch, Bill, on the lighting. Okay. Okay. Great.